Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob here. Turn your King James Bible to the book of John. We're going to start in chapter 16 and then 17. Jesus speaking. Verse 1. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. Jesus had a lot of things about uh, people being offended at his words. In the book of Luke, chapter 7, 23, And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Matthew eleven six. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. You know, I, I think I did an entire study on offended. I think it was Peter that said uh, that the uh, Pharisees were offended by the words of Jesus. So let's go back to John 16, 1. These things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. Do the words of Christ offend you? Verse 2. They. Who's they? Those that don't believe. Those that are offended, offended by the words of Christ. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Uh, who hangs out in the synagogues? Uh, Muslims, right? Oh, yeah. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. Yeah. Tell that to the pre-trib rapture crowd. You know, the Baptists, uh-uh. Boy, they, they, you know, they're, they're like, oh, well, we're New Testament Christians. We don't read that Old Testament. Well, you don't read the New Testament either. Because if you read the eighth chapter of John, uh, you wouldn't be telling people that the chosen people are who you're telling them they are. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. What God? Hmm. Verse 3. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. See, if they knew the Father, they would know the Son. But they don't know the Son. They don't know the Father either. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. So, when he's gone, these things will come to remembrance. And we're going to get to that in a minute. But now I go my way. To him that sent me. Oh yeah. He's getting ready to get crucified here. And none of you asketh me. Whither goest thou? Uh, yeah, where are you going? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And the Comforter is just another name for the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. And when he, and when he, You ever hear a preacher or rabbi or whatever 
Hebrew roots generally, they talk about the she, kinda, well, they don't call it, they don't make it two words. They, the she kinda, the shekina. It's actually she kinda. The glory of God, the Holy Spirit. Uh, um, they're talking about God's wife, by the way. When you hear the Shekinah, they're talking about the Holy Spirit as a female, God's wife. Yeah. But my King James Bible says he. The Holy Spirit is called he, not she. You hang around the internet long enough and you'll you'll run into the she kinda. Yeah. When you see the uh, them at the wailing wall doing the pelvis thrusting, guess what they're doing? They're uh yeah, the Shekinah. They're doing the Shekinah. Yeah, it's a dance, right? <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm really not. I'm not joking, people. They really believe this stuff. Well, or they tell us they believe this stuff. I don't know. Verse 8. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. So he's going to expose sin in the world. And of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not me see believing in Christ is the remedy for sin but they have of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. Oh, yeah. And if you don't know who the prince of this world is, it's Satan. Satan the devil. He's judged. And his lease is just about running out. I think he's getting his 30-day notice. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Hmm. Do you know that after the crucifixion, that uh, Christ... After he was risen from the dead, he appeared to them and told them some things. Oh, yeah. But that's beyond the scope of this lesson anyway. So, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. All right, verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, the, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Truth, as opposed to the Spirit of Lies, which is, you know, Satan's the father of lies, right? Howbeit when he, the Spirit of Truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. See, the Holy Spirit doesn't speak of himself. He glorifies Christ. So when you, if you go to a, what they call a full gospel church, you know, Pentecostals, the, the tongue talker people, uh, when they're doing Holy Ghost this and the Holy Ghost that. No. The Holy Spirit glorifies Christ and Christ glorifies the Father. 
So when they're talking about the Holy Ghost this and the Holy Ghost that, you're in the wrong place. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then said some of the disciples among themselves, What is this that he saith unto us? A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me. And because I go to the Father... They said, therefore, what is this that he saith a little while? We cannot tell what he saith. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him and said unto them, Do, you, do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said a little while and ye shall not see me and again a little while and ye shall see me? Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. Right, they're talking about the crucifixion here. The disciples will weep and lament. Herod and all the temple people, well, they're going to rejoice. They're going to be happy. And ye shall be sorrowful, but... Your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow, because her hour has come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for the joy, for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto, have ye asked nothing in my name? Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. But the time cometh, when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you. Wow. For the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. Wow. I came forth from the Father and am come into the world. Again, I leave the, leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly and speaketh no proverb. For now we are sure that thou knowest all things and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered. Ye shall be scattered. Oh, well, what's up with this? You know, scattered? What? 
Mark 14, 27, companion verse. And Jesus saith unto them, All ye shall be offended, offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. Matthew 26, 31. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Back to John 16, 32. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone, and yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I remember when he was on the cross, he says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In that, in that hour, in that time, when all the sins were being laid upon Christ, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That's some pretty heavy words. Verse 33, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. See, in Christ we're going to have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, trouble. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Chapter 17. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Him. Hmm. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Who's giving him? To, who's giving who what? God the Father is giving eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Him, Christ. God the Father gives them to Christ. Think about that. Now, in John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Ah, only one door. Someone once said, that's the most narrow-minded statement I've ever heard. Well, you either believe it or you don't. That's the way it is. Uh, you want to hear something wild. And this is going to tie into what I'm getting to. John chapter 6, verse 44. No man can come to me. Who's talking here? Jesus. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. The last day, not before the pre the the Tribulation and the pre-trib rapture. Uh-uh. The last day. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. So if the Father doesn't draw you to Christ, you're not going to come to him. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up 
at the last day. Okay, back to John 17. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. If you haven't been given to Christ from the Father, ain't going to happen. See, that's why they always push these de demon nominational teachers. The Well, the Bible says, whosoever will... Whosoever will believe in Jesus, they'll be saved. Well, the reason they do that is because if everybody can be saved, let's agree with old Dement Dementia Joe and have open borders. Bring everybody in. It doesn't matter. And then we should be teaching them about Jesus. The people that practice voodoo over in uh, that little island in the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah, and it sounds like hate. Uh, you know, really. See, and what they'll do is if you actually do believe in election, They'll try to turn it into a heresy by saying, well, does God, does God have people born so he can throw them in hell? Well, I don't know. Does he? In Romans 9.13, it says, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Esau was Jacob's brother, people. Read Malachi chapter 1. I get angry when I go to these so-called Christian sites and people are like, oh, God loves everybody. Come to Jesus. Uh, Esau's not going to be in the kingdom. Esau's going to be in the other place. How do I know that? Hebrews chapter 12. Follow peace with all, uh, 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. There's got to be holiness. And the only way you're going to have any holiness is to have the holiness of Christ. Because we don't have any holiness. I know I don't have any holiness. That's for sure. Follow peace with all men, as much as possible, anyways. <laughs> funny thing is Jesus and Luke I think it was Luke 19 or 20 or 21 maybe 22 um, when he was in the garden he said let he that hath no sword sell his coat and buy one you know being having a sword was more important than being warm in the winter yeah yeah really have a sword I think every uh, I think every believer should at least have a knife on him at all times I was in my back, uh, dad's backyard helping him with the fence and got attacked by a Doberman. Didn't have a knife, but ever since then, I've always carried one. You know, Jesus said, have a sword, but he says, follow peace with all men. Well, as much, as, 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 much as it is possible. Follow peace with all men in holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. You know, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Christ, period. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Remember, uh, Jesus told us to forgive. Forgive our enemies, not forgive the enemies of the Lord. Forgive our enemies. If I'm ever in the woods uh, with a rifle hunting or something, and I come across a bunch of Satanists getting ready to sacrifice a child on an altar to Satan, uh, let's just say I'm going to be short some bullets. Yeah. 
You never know. Forgive our enemies. But there are capital crimes where certain crimes are punishable by the death penalty, but we don't want to talk about that. Billy Goat Graham took care of that. Oh, God loves everybody. I don't think so, Billy Goat. Well, he's got his eternal reward. And I keep always hear people, well, Billy Graham brought millions of people to the Lord. Well, if Billy Goat Graham brought all these millions of people to the Lord, and we're, you know, Christians, all these Christians, how come you got gay weddings? How come you got abortion legal? You know, let me tell you something. When there's a revival, movie theaters are going to close. Bars and liquor stores are going to go out of business. I don't see that happening. So, yeah, don't tell me about Billy Goat Graham. Oh, Bob, you're being very judgmental. Yeah, you're right. I am. The rotten fruit, that's what I saw. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or, or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. Do you know that Esau was to uh, get the right of the firstborn? It was a blessing. He didn't want it. He should have inherited it, but he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Yeah, he had crocodile tears. The Lord rejected Esau. And Esau was called a fornicator, but he married his two wives. You know why he was called a fornicator? Because he should never have married those Hittite women who were of the tribes of the Canaanites, who were of the fallen angel, human hybrids. Yeah, people don't believe that anymore. Angels can't have sex. Right, so in... The days of uh, Genesis 6, before the flood, uh, believing men were marrying unbelieving women and they were having giants for children. Right. And then God wiped them all out in a flood instead of having somebody preach to them. Jesus loves you. Believe in Jesus. Uh, and it didn't work out that way. I'm sorry, but it's the way it goes. All right, let's go back. Verse 2, chapter 17, book of John. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. God, Jesus was not given Esau. Verse 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast hast sent. Now these are the words of Christ in red. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Do you know that Christ was with the Father before the world even existed, says it right here. Unless, of course, you got a Jehovah's Witness Bible, then they'll, yeah, uh, yeah, they they turn Christ into a created being, you know, like one of the angels. Matter of fact, they say he's Michael the angel, and I guess God gave him a legal name change from 
Michael the angel to Jesus. I don't know how that works, but uh, I looked everywhere in the Bible. I couldn't find that. So somebody's uh, part of the watchtower and, you know, could show me in a, the Bible, let me know. And by the way, the watchtower, um, the Jehovah's Witnesses, do you know they used the King James for well over 50 years? Up until 1964 when they made their uh, New World Order translation. I mean the New World translation. Well, I was right the first time. So, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. See, Christ was with the Father from the very beginning. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me. See, God the Father gave them his sheep to him. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are mine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. See, all all the fathers belongs to the Son, and all that belongs to the Son belongs to the Father. Plain and simple. 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one, that they may be one as we are. See, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are one. And Christ, in the flesh, called him Holy Father. Uh, what do people address the Pope as? Uh, Holy Father. Why in the world would you call some guy over in Rome Holy Father? Uh, if you could ever figure that one out, let me know, because I'd be interested. Where does the Bible say to call any man Holy Father? But, you know, and yet there's a billion people that would uh, follow that lie, but hey, that's on them. Verse 12, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me have I kept, and none of them is lost, but. There's always that but. You know what goats do? They have horns and they butt you. Yeah, goats. Not sheep, goats. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost, but the son of perdition. Uh, what does perdition mean? It means to fall. Yeah. And none of them is lost, but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I and now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, 
even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou but but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. You know that word evil? Put a D in front of it. What do you have? D evil? Oh, 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 devil. Oh, uh, okay. Got it. Got it, Bob. Okay. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through thy truth. Sanctified means to be set apart. You know, something holy. Uh, let's say you had dedicated a room in your house to the gathering of a church. You know, back in the old days, they had, uh, they went house to house for church. So if you dedicated a room just for that, it would be a, a sanctified room. Uh, the Holy of Holies, where the high priest would go once a year and offer blood for the sacrifice, that would be sanctified. It was set apart for a, a certain purpose. You know, you wouldn't use it for a garbage dump. Well, you could, but you wouldn't live very long if you were the uh, high priest. Verse 20, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. So Christ isn't just praying for the eleven apostles, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. See, the apostles are going to go out and preach the word, and Christ is going to pray for them that believe on Jesus through their words. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved me as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, there's that father giving the, uh, the sheep to the son, the great shepherd. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these things have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the, the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. That's some powerful stuff, people. Well, my opinion, anyways. Listen to this. Romans chapter 9, verse 11. Speaking of Jacob and Esau. Now, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And he had 12 sons, which were the 12 tribes of Israel. So, Jacob and Esau. 
Romans 9, verse 11. For the children, being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, uh, in the flesh anyways, right? That the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth, Hmm. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. Esau was the firstborn, the elder. Verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. People, you think things were are bad now? What do you think Israel went through under Pharaoh in Egypt in the days of Moses? Oh, well, if you have a, a child that's a boy, well, you got to throw it in the, uh, the Nile River. A uh, little snack for the crocodiles. Can you imagine that? But if you got a daughter, you, she can stick around, no problem, as long as she marries an Egyptian guy, you know. You think we got it bad? Ha! Huh. You ain't seen nothing yet, dog. Let me tell you. Yeah. They had it bad. And God raised up Pharaoh that he might show his power in him. And God is raising up this evil, wicked generation of so-called leaders so that God's power might be shown in the earth. Persecution is going to separate the sheep from the goats. And it's going to send a wake-up call to the true remnant church. Right now, the church is still playing games. And God doesn't like playing games. He doesn't like a lukewarm church. He wants you hot or he wants you cold. And people don't like me because, well, I'm kind of a mix, but sometimes I'm hot. He wants us to be on fire for the Lord. And some of these verses that I read, they can't handle this stuff. Oh, but all Esau had to do was believe on the Lord Jesus and he'll be saved. Uh, I don't think so. It's God that shows the mercy. God that shows compassion. You know, Esau must have existed in some form before he was born. And must have done something displeasing to the Lord. That's my theory, my guess. Uh, can I support that from the Bible? No. But it's just, an, uh, you know, a guess. I mean, why would the Lord hate somebody before they're even born? There had to be a reason. But in this earthly plane of existence, uh, we'll, find, we'll probably find out later. So let's close this puppy out.
John chapter 10. Verse 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me if any man enter in. Did you catch that? I am the door. He's the door to heaven, people. By me if any man enter in. He shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. You know, that's what a sheep does. It finds pasture and wants to have dinner, right? The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. What was King David before he faced Goliath? He was a shepherd, right? Verse 12. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hiring fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. What do you think these politicians are? They're hirelings. I don't care what country. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of them and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. What's he talking about here? Uh, other sheep. Simple. Well, that's simple to answer. Jeremiah 3, verse 8. And I saw, when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, spiritual adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. God divorced Israel. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. Huh. God divorced Israel. Next time uh, somebody says, Oh, well, you know, the Jews have got an everlasting covenant with the Father. Show this verse to them. See, the Bible makes a distinction between Israel and Judah. But... The modern demon nominational so-called church world. Oh, they're all the same. Eh, I don't think so. God divorced Israel. But he didn't divorce Judah. In Jeremiah 31, 31, we read, and you can read this in the book of Hosea too, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant. New covenant. Not a renewed covenant, like the Hebrew roots heretics tell you. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't work the first time, but we're going to give it a second chance. You know, the old covenant. Yeah. You listen to the Hebrew roots heretics, uh, you'll have them rebuild the temple and start doing animal sacrifices. Yeah, watch. Watch and see. Yeah, they're going to lead you right into the arms of the Antichrist. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, 
that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Israel and Judah. I don't read the whole world there, do you? No. Israel and Judah. So, you know, the whole world? I don't think so. Who is Israel? Well, remember, Abraham was the grandfather of Israel. Jacob, you know, Jacob Israel. God made a promise to Abraham. Confirmed the promise to Ishmael. And then reconfirmed the promise with Jacob Israel. In Galatians 3.29, one of the reasons why they hate Paul, Paul writes, And if ye be Christ, if you're in Christ, and if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. Abraham's children. Then are ye and heirs according to the promise. The promises that God made to Abraham. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Doesn't say spiritual seed. Doesn't say, you know, become. It says you are. Then are ye. In English, you'd say, then you are. There's no such thing as spiritual seed in the Bible. So let's keep reading. All right, John 10, 16. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. See, Christ went to Judah first. And then Paul went to it. Uh, what they call the Gentiles, which was Israel. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I... Lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. All right, verse 19. There was a division, therefore, again among the Jews for these sayings. And many of them said, He hath a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? Hey, this guy is crazy. He's demon-possessed. Why are you listening to this guy? Others said, These are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of the Dedication, and it was winter. Hanukkah. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about, and said unto him, How long dost thou, dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because... Ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. Now, were they not his sheep because they didn't believe? Or did they not believe because they were not of his sheep? Did the Father not give them to him? Depends on if you believe in whosoever will or election. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice. 
My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Hmm. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father, for which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. You see, they understood what he was saying. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? If ye call them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God? If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works. Believe the works that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. I and my Father are one. People, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Chaplain Bob, signing off. October 6, 2021. Never thought I'd live this long. In Jesus' name, amen.